There is something different about these two text fields. One of them is a good user experience. Another, less so. If we're using a decimal number, it's only one of these two I want to use. It's the second one. It's a currency field. I think it would probably help you out to go to the repo and download the code before we get into this. So basically this will be me explaining how to do the code and it's a lot easier if you can read along yourself. Okay? So here I have two text fields. In either one I can add 50 of a particular currency and it works reasonably fine. But notice the second one has added the dollar symbol. It happens to be the locale of this particular simulator and the decimal places. So what happens if we want $50.80? Well, we can enter them in. And they seem to work fine. Obviously, you don't get the dollars in the first one. What if we have two decimal places? Well, the first one allows it. The second one actually deals with that case. And you'll notice the second one, I haven't set the uh, keyboard type here. If I actually type in letters, it accepts them, but then formats correctly removing them. So this is clearly a better solution, not just because of the formatting here, but because it's doing almost some type of validation. So what's going on here? The first one's just an ordinary text field which has an amount and a string amount, which is a string, and it's using SwiftUI's state, so that's the source of truth here. The second one is a currency field, which is bound to this decimal amount. So decimal is representing the number much in a much better way. So then if we needed to do something with this about later or somewhere else within the app. Decimal is a good way of storing a currency, a uh, amount of money. So what's going on with this currency field under the hood? If we look here, it's just a view and it just has a body like you'd expect. Within this, I've got a number formatter. So this is where I'm formatting the currency as a currency and we'll use that later in the implementation. Unfortunately, you can't use that currency formatter when the user is actually entering in the numbers. You can actually get hard crashes because when you're entering, it's not a fully formed currency for various reasons. So we'll use a decimal formatter for that particular instance. So you have two formatters. You have one when you're finished and you have one while you're typing in. The properties for this view You've got a title, which is the letters. I think I had amount written as text. And then you have the value, which is a, a bound NS number. And you have these two states. So they're owned by SwiftUI, so we'll know when they're changing, which is the value while you're editing and the is editing Boolean. So we know if we're editing or not at any given time. And we've got this initializer which is setting the title and value. Nothing particularly outstanding or exciting there. And then we have our body, which is a text field. We're just setting the title, as you might expect, but the text is bound. And that means when you're getting the value, if you're editing at that given time, then it will display the value while editing. If you're not editing, it will display the formatted value, which is kind of the endpoint value. So, kind of the magic is when you're setting the values. So we only want numbers and decimal places. So when you set, I've used a filter here, so you only have that text. And we count how many, how many decimal places. If there's one or less, then you have a valid piece of text. So what we do is we set the value while editing to the value which is filtered here and then we update the value and that's what is going to be displayed so we'll do some formatting there I'll cover it in a second if you have more decimal places what do you want to do you want to take them out and 
usually you just drop the last element in the string, the last character. But a user can actually quickly type in twice two periods and then you've got two decimal places and it would only delete one. So you find out how long the string is compared to what you expect and you delete the last n. So that could be two or three and it actually works if a user's typing in other characters which aren't decimal places. So then we set the value while editing to be that new value and then we update the value which is going to format it nicely for us. And when we're finished editing, well, we'll set editing, it will usually be false here because we're finished. Oh, sorry, it's, it's on editing changed. So if it's false, it would set it to false. If it's true, it would set it to true. And it sets our value while editing to the formatted value. So that formatted value is the wrap value, the internal value for the value we're storing in this view. If there isn't one, just return nothing, that's fine. And then we're setting up this formatter here. And remember we have the two formatters, the one where you're editing or the one when you're finished. If you're editing, use the formatter for editing, if not use the one where you're finished. So the final value will be the string formatted selected here for the value. If there's no such, um, if you can't format it for whatever reason, incorrect characters, just return nothing, better than a crash at least. If not, return the formatted value. And this is the last piece where we're updating the value. So we're using the editing formatter here. So you're updating the edited string if you like, and then create the editing string from that and then assign it to be an NS number and create that wrapped value. So it's the actual value that we'll be using. And that's just about it. This is for people to use, to look at and think of ways of writing a text view, sorry, a text field that doesn't need to wrap a UI text field or UI text view. Yes, this isn't the only way of solving this problem. Nothing ever is, but I'm really interested to know how other people might either use this solution or have their own solution to this. Hey, even write another article about it. If you could do that, it'd be really interesting. Really like to see how people are using Swift, and in this case, Swift UI, to solve problems and create great apps. Anyway, here it's Friday night. Hope you have a good weekend, although it's in the past for you. Hmm.